empty for a minute? Uh huh. Sure, you know. As usual, we have to remove the intercooler. So this is gonna happen when you have 20 year old rubber. I'm gonna cut that back about half an inch just to make it work for now until I can replace it. It's hard as a rock. Okay, check this out. It's literally like plastic. So that seal could not have been very good either. So that may have possibly reduced the uh, fuel supply there. If that wasn't pushing down, that's, that's like plastic. That's not even rubber anymore. So I'm gonna put this uh, zip tie around because none of the clamps fit. Then I'm going to Pre tighten it. And now that's a really tight fit. All right, there's a new hose on there. So obviously, we have to remove the top cap. If you drop one of these screws, it's going to go between the injector pump and the engine block. Diaphragm cap is going to lift up because of the spring tension, so it's going to pop up a bit. Kind of doubt that that's doing anything at all anymore. Probably just take that off, I don't know. Well, that's for another day. That's what the underside looks like. Here's the original position of the compensator diaphragm. You can see that the O is not exactly towards the engine block. It's slightly uh, counterclockwise. Uh, so 90 degrees would be right about there. And I had it at about here. So actually I had it about 180 degrees. Now if we pull this out slowly, there's a plastic spacer there. Don't want to drop it somewhere. Okay, it just fell off. Here's the diaphragm spring, obviously. And this is what they call the fun police. And a lot of guys just chuck it. I think uh, for now I'm gonna shave it down three uh, millimeters and see what that does. And I'm also going to lower the star wheel. So I mark that so I know the original setting. And this star wheel I'm gonna turn clockwise three quarters of one turn, which is 270 degrees. That's gonna drop the uh, boost compensator spring down, which will allow this to drop easier and sooner. This turn's real easy. So again, 270 degrees. Should be coming up on that pretty soon. There it is. This is where I scratched the star wheel. That's the starting point. So that looks like about three quarters of a turn, maybe a hair more, which is okay. Now I'm gonna shave the uh, plastic spacer. So it looks like that plastic spacer measures about five centimeters. I'm gonna take off about, I don't know, two and a half, probably cut it in half. This plastic is pretty dry from 20 years of uh, hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. So it's cutting pretty easy. I'm turning it as I go to make sure that it stays pretty much symmetrical. I'll flip it over. And this is 320 grit sandpaper. All right, so the foam police has been shaved down by about three millimeters. And you can see that's obviously thinner. You can see my new line. So in looking at this pin, I was actually probably not too far off. I would say the max is right about there. 
You want the deepest part of that to be towards the front of your injection pump, which is where the pin is. Previously, it was sitting there. In fact, it's probably been there for 20 years. Got my spacer back on there. Originally, it was down to here. Clearly, that's about 50% shaved off now. So what that means is that instead of stopping there, it'll stop there, which will allow the pin to come out farther and allow more fuel. For many people, that zero on the diaphragm corresponds to a helpful geometry on the pin. In this case, it doesn't. It's not at the deepest point or the most shallow point. If we put the deepest geometry of the pin to correspond with the zero here, then we can see exactly where we're at on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack this nut loose and I'm going to adjust that so that the zero will correspond with the deepest geometry of the uh, fuel pin. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, grease on here, put my thumb police spacer back on and put the diaphragm back together. Let's put kind of a thin layer on here. This is also gonna help hold that, um, that shaved spacer in place, so it's not gonna be as likely to fall off. Now I'm gonna find my zero, which is there. I'm also gonna put some grease where the pin, where the fuel pin will be sliding. And for anybody who's wondering, this is the uh, water temperature sensor. Well, it's not the sensor, but it's the uh, housing for the sensor. The sensor is over here. I put it out of the way, so if I'm reaching in here, I'm not gonna cut myself on that. Um, anyway, there it is. It's just a cheap uh, online anodized aluminum piece. Uh, real happy with it. Works really well. Again, I think I've shaved slightly more than they say to shave. But some guys just chuck it right in the garbage anyway, so I think that'll be all right. Okay, so slide that up there. Okay, again, our zero corresponds with the deepest point. The fuel pin is towards the front here. As you can see with the zero, I'm gonna turn it 180 degrees. So now the zero is towards the front of the engine. Got our spacer on there. And just drop that down. If this doesn't drop down, that means somebody's probably played with the uh, accelerator pedal or bumped the linkage and kicked the uh, fuel pin out. So you would just have to take a screwdriver and push that back in towards the front of the vehicle again. Dead center forward. And I'm gonna put the cap back on. I have a tendency to over tighten everything. So I'm gonna pretend like I have a screwdriver in my hand. Plus if you play with this a lot, you're gonna be excessively wearing the threads. This is the, obviously this is the hose that provides pressure to the top side of the diaphragm, pushing it down or allowing it to come back up. So that's fairly important. <laughs> Three hundred and sixty degrees, one full turn, which brings this down, which means that we're starting out with more fuel. So I'm going to put just a dab of grease on there for the heck of it. The engine block is twelve o'clock. It's slightly past. So now I'm going to turn. There's half a turn, and there's a full turn. And then I'm just going to then I'm just going to lock this off. Everything on top is basically done. The last thing we need to do is the fuel load screw. Because I don't know if this has already been turned or not, I'm gonna take one person's advice and adjust this while the engine's running. So I'm gonna crack that loose. I'm going to mentally mark where that screw position is. Then with the engine running, I'm gonna turn that clockwise, starting at about a quarter turn and see what the engine does. And if I can go to half a turn without the engine running away, which is the uh, concern, then I'll probably leave it at that. But if, as I'm turning towards half a turn, the engine starts running away or starts putting out a lot of black smoke, then I'll back it off and probably lock it to wherever it is without too much. Okay, this is the 4M40 engine. And I guess this line often blocks access with a socket to the lock nut. 
I think on the 44056, that's not an issue. You have much easier access. So I just uh, took a wrench and I just pushed that down a bit. So now I have access to the lock nut. So I don't know how this is gonna work on your vehicle, but if I leave the ratchet not fully locked into the socket, uh, it leaves space for the fuel line. Okay, that came pretty loose pretty fast. My screws not changed position, so that's good. I'm gonna back off the lock nut uh, two or three turns just to allow me to turn that screw more easily. You can kind of turn it by hand. So now I'm gonna start the engine and I'm going to turn that uh, one quarter turn and see what the reaction is. Then I'll see if I can go up to half a turn without the engine running away or smoking too much. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, make sure not to over tighten that. All right, there's the fuel screw. So now we just have to adjust the idle. Okay, start it up again, turn on the air conditioning and set the idle.